Hello and welcome viewers. Often the over exploitation of surface water and ground water leads to a natural disaster and one of such natural disasters that occurs very commonly is a flood. Now in this video we will be studying about the causes, impacts, control measures and disaster management of floods. So when do we use the term flood? It is a term that is used to denote the overflowing of water that is submerging a land which is usually dry. And it occurs when the soil and the vegetation is unable to absorb all of the water. So the extra water runs off the land in huge quantities, in quantities which cannot be restrained in the water bodies. This is what we call as a flood. And usually the rivers are the water bodies which get flooded often. Other than that, we can also have coastal floods that are caused due to cyclones or due to tsunamis. We can even have inland flood which is usually seen in the urban areas and we also have flash floods which usually begin within 3 to 6 hours of heavy rainfall. So these are the different types of flooding that can happen. But whatever you say, flooding is when there is an excess of water and this excess of water causes a large amount of destruction. It causes huge loss of lives and it causes damage to livelihood. It damages property like you can see over here. This is in the Chinese province of Yangshi where the floods had particularly destroyed property and infrastructure. This is from July 2020. We also have a lot of other property and public utilities which are destroyed, infrastructure that is destroyed due to floods. Not only that, it also leads to destruction of crops, livestock and there is a rampant spread of waterborne diseases once the floods have happened. That is after the floods occur, before the water recedes, there is a lot of spread of waterborne diseases. So these are the harmful or the negative impacts of flooding in a particular area. Even India is highly vulnerable to floods. In fact, we can say it is one of the highest in the world and we often face this natural disaster. In fact, in India, the state of Bihar is one of the common states where flooding occurs annually and Kosi River, which is there in Bihar, is called as the sorrow of Bihar because it keeps getting flooded on a regular basis. We also have floods occurring commonly in Assam. We have the southern states of Kerala which and uh, the if you remember in Chennai, there were floods in 2015. There are there is Gujarat is a state again which commonly sees floods. We have flash floods happening often in Uttarakhand. So these are the areas which are commonly prone to floods and these floods have certain natural as well as anthropogenic causes. The natural causes are due to heavy rainfall. Heavy or even prolonged rainfall that is rainfall occurring over a long period of time can also cause flooding. We can also have the melting ice and snow causing floods in a particular region, especially in the hilly regions. And the third reason, the third natural cause for flooding is that the river basin's carrying capacity gets reduced due to landslides or due to deposition of the silt. This is one of the major problems in Kosi River that I told you earlier, where there is heavy siltation, that is heavy deposition of silt. When there is deposition of silt, it slowly raises the river bed and that leads to reduced carrying capacity of the river. So that is again one of the reasons for flooding. When there is reduced carrying capacity, the water needs a place to go and it flows, it, it changes its path and it flows over onto the land, onto the river basin. The anthropogenic causes or the man-made causes mainly include deforestation. So we have already looked at what are the impacts of deforestation and flooding is a very, very common impact, common detrimental effect of deforestation. The reason being when there are no trees, there are no roots to hold on to the water, the water is unable to get a break and it flows onto the land. We also have failure of dam which is often attributed to flooding. So though dams have been built to control flooding, many a times the dams can break or as you can see over here, the portion of a dam in uh, uh, south of Superior Lake has broken. So unusually heavy rainfall or due to improper dam construction, we can have the dam failing, dam breaking and when the large amount of water stored by the dam is broken into, it flows onto the land and causes flooding. We also have urbanization and construction which attribute to flooding. So the, it leads to less percolation of water to the ground. The water is not getting a chance to get inside the ground when there are a lot of roads or other constructed areas. And that again leads to water running off that particular region and causing floods in the nearby areas. Mining is again one more major problem which leads to flooding because mining 
totally moves up the land it uproots the soil the soil is loose so that again is unable to hold on to the water and that that can lead to floods so these are the common natural and anthropogenic causes for flooding what are the control measures for this flooding so the first and the best way to control flooding in any area is reforestation we have to get back the tree cover so that these strong trees and their roots are able to hold on to the flood waters they are able to break the flow of water and we are able to control the extent of floods the second thing is building dams or reservoirs or constructing floodways as you can see over here this is a floodway that has been built on a rural road so bring or constructing some kind of barrier that can block the flow of water that can cut the flow of water we also have the conservation of soil which adds on so efficient methods of conserving soil managing the soil like doing crop rotation or contour farming or plowing all of these can help in controlling the flood waters it can help in controlling the floods and recharging the ground water is again one very important mechanism of controlling floods so we can induce infiltration we can make sure that the water flood waters are actually able to reach into the ground water into the aquifers so that ground water level increases and we don't have too much of water on the surface we can reduce the extent of floods so these are some of the common control measures of floods but once a flood happens once the disaster has struck how do we manage the disaster so there is flood risk management which is a uh, management strategy which aims to reduce the human losses and the socio economic losses that have been caused by flooding so we can have certain points in or we can have certain measures in place so that the flood disaster has been managed well basically disaster management includes all the aspects of preparedness it includes the preventive measures the protective measures the organization of relief operations all of this together is what we call as disaster management so the disaster management's main role or main aim is to reduce the impact of the floods the first method by which we can or the first measure that can be taken into place for managing the floods is mapping of the flood prone areas now this can be done using satellite images using uh, remote sensing based imagery we can check which areas are more pro prone to floods and in such areas we can have preventive measures taken before the flooding actually occurs before the rain season before the monsoons we can actually have certain measures put in place we can forecast the flood so flood forecasting is wherein we disseminate prior information regarding the occurrence of flood so that people can be moved they can be displaced before the flood actually hits them we can also have reduction of runoff that can be done by reforestation which i have already spoken to you under control measures construction of dams construction of detention basins so that flood water doesn't you know increase in volume it doesn't peak in volume and we can control the flow of the water downstream so some kind of embankments some kind of dams can be built something similar to that is stream channelization which are basically canals that can be used to divert the excess water in rivers so you know that this particular river is prone to flooding build a canal build multiple canals beside it so that the water when it is overflowing into the rivers can be diverted into these canals and the canals then can be used for farming or for any other purpose for irrigation for uh, water i mean uh, uh, for providing water to the for domestic purposes so all other channels which can be taken can be used for channelizing or for diverting the flood waters we can even improve the river channel itself so widening the river channel deepening the river channel can also ensure that the flood waters do not reach the lands for example in the kosi river we know the problem is excessive siltation the removal of silt the dredging of silt can be done so that the river bed again goes lower and more water can be uh, occupied in the rivers we also have the diversion of waters flood waters into wetlands into desert dry lands that can be done this is one scheme which has been taken up in rajasthan that is the ghagar reversion scheme wherein the flood waters from the river have been diverted into the desert dry lands which actually don't have any water at all so these are different examples of stream channelization wherein some other channel is being built which can divert the flood waters from the main river and finally 
ensuring there is disaster relief that is flood insurance ensuring the people are being shifted onto areas where good basic amenities are being provided so that they are able to restore their lifestyle this is again one more very important parameter in disaster management so what we have looked at today are the causes the impacts the control measures of floods and once the disaster strikes having good disaster management measures in place so that flood risk management can be done and future occurrences of flood can be managed better. I hope this video was useful to all of you. Thank you.